in each opportunity that you have, there lie many other opportunities. You just have to think to look for them. When you are thinking about anything, you're leaving a ton of money on the table. I promise you, if you don't do this. So take your core action, whatever the core thing is that you're going to do, and then say, what are five ways that I can leverage that? And you can say monetize or leverage, however you want to do it, right? And then write those five ways down, but don't stop there. If I stop there, I leave a lot of money on the table. Then for each of those five things, Think of five ways you can monetize that. So it's a lot like a Russian Matryoshka doll, right? right? There's one within another, within another, within another. The idea here is to get as much out of everything as possible. So in 2010, I was in Europe with my wife. We were traveling and there was an eruption of a volcano in Iceland. When I went to Iceland a few years later, my guide said, by the time we get done with this, week of, that you have here, I'm going to teach you how to say that one Icelandic word, which is Eyjafjallajökull. So Eyjafjallajökull uh, erupted and put ash all over the sky in Europe, shut all the flights down. We were trying to get out. I, I didn't know about it because I wasn't watching the news. And I went to check in for the flight and they were like, all the flights are canceled. So we had kind of done everything we were going to do. And I asked my wife, I said, you know, I've been studying all this product launch stuff. I've never done one, but it's like, you know, this thing where there's an affiliate product and I'd like to find one and see if I can sell it and just see if the stuff that I've been working on and studying actually works. And she's like, yeah, I don't care. I'll, we, I'll, I'll just read. And so I was like, okay. So I, I went online and found this product that was being sold at the time by a guy named Mike Koenigs. It was called Main Street Marketing Machines and it was selling for 3000 bucks. And I was like, okay, well, this would be a good thing to start with. So I signed up as an affiliate. The problem was that I didn't have a product, so that's why I had to find his. But I also didn't have a list because I just hadn't built one. And I didn't really want to spend a lot of money on it because we just spent a lot of money on the trip. So as a test, I decided that I would commit money to it. I committed $1,250 to it, and then I wrote a business plan. The business plan was about 14 pages long, and it was just an outline, so it wasn't like a, you know, what's the size of my market and stuff like that. It was just, these are all the things that I can do to generate revenue. And there were, I think there were maybe 16 or so different things that I realized could do it. SEO was one, YouTube videos, buying mailing lists, partnering with other people. And some of it was ads. I spent about $1,250 on ads. And in six days, I sold 1.265 million of this product, which put me as the number one affiliate. Uh, my goal was to sell more than Frank Kern had sold before because he had sold 400 and he's a friend of mine. And so the first day I sold 585,000. So I was like, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. It was amazing that it worked, but if I had stopped there and I didn't get to keep all that, I only got to keep about 800 grand of it. But, um, that's 1,012 times my return on that investment, by the way. In six days was pretty good. But then I wanted to say, well, what can I get out of this besides this initial money? And I think where, where we have a tendency to stop is that we have a big lick like that and we say, okay, we did good, what's next? But rather than saying what's next, I said, what else can I do? So I found out that he was having his launch event or like his customer appreciation event for all the thousands of people that bought this thing uh, here in San Diego where I live and it was not starting until one o'clock in the afternoon on the first day which is kind of a miracle because every event starts at 8 or 9 a.m. but for some reason whatever he had started at one o'clock and so I called the hotel and I said can I get the 8 to 12 space in the the other big ballroom that you've got that he's not using using and uh, I'm going to host my event because I had promised my people an event that I would get together with them and do some training that had bought because I had about 400 and some people that had bought from me. They said, well, you have to get his permission. So I called him up and I said, you know, hey, I didn't know him. I said, uh, hey, I'm the guy that sold. I was your number one affiliate and uh, I got this customer appreciation thing. Can I get the room for that time? He's like, yeah, no problem. And I said, are you going to sell anything to the people? And he said, no, the only thing I sell is a certification. I said, okay, that says they've completed? Yeah. I said, okay, you don't sell coaching or anything like that? No. I was like, aha. I scheduled the space 
And then I was like, how can I get more people to come to the space? So this is where you start leveraging, right? So now first thing is now I know I've got this event, and I also know that he's got several thousand people coming. I've only got 400, so how can I get more people into my thing? So before anybody else that I know of in this industry had done it, now the big event people do it, and we do it at Traffic Conversion Summit, but I asked the hotel, I said, do you guys have a dark channel that plays the video over and over and over, right? And they said, yeah. And I said, how much would it cost for me to buy that during this event before, my, you know, when everybody's checking in? I only need it for that one day. What would it, if, if I want to run my own video on all those channels? And they said, it's $1,200. And I was like, done. <laughs> so I bought it and gave them a video that, that pushed, hey, here for the Mike Koenig's event, you know, come to my thing first. It's before the event starts on the same day. Wondering what you're going to do during that four hours? I got you covered, right? I paid three people to stand out in, from my mail business to stand out and hand out flyers to everybody as they were walking around because there was all these people walking around the event that said the event was going to happen. Then I went up to the front desk and I said, I said, hey, is there any way that I could get you guys to you know, to maybe hand these out for me. And I handed them a stack of the flyers with two $100 bills on top. And they said, absolutely, we would be happy to do that. <laughs> In the event world, the room was about maybe four times, this room four times as big. In the event world, when you think you're not going to have that many people, you set the room in rounds because it makes it look fuller, right? So I had the room set in rounds and um, people started coming in and all the rounds got filled. And then the, there were doors like this around two sides of the room. And all around the room, people were standing, packed two or three deep. And then the windows outside, people were in a line trying to get in the room looking in. And I was like, holy crap. When you sell in a room, ideally, you put the sales table back there where Deanna is because that's where you want people to go as they leave. You want them to be able to buy. I couldn't do that because the room was all windows and they wouldn't let me block the doors. They had fire marshals that are like, people are going to burn to death. So uh, I put, had to put the sales table. This was the stage and I had to put the sales table right here. And I talked to my friend, Mark Anthony, who's a member of War Room. Some of you guys might know him. Uh, and said, I've never sold anything before. How do you do this? And he gave me you know, coaching tips and I built a coaching program. And I was like, I don't know how to coach people. I've never coached people before. Who am I get, gonna get to do this? So the uh, promoter Koenigs had five people that he called all-stars that, he, that were, he was propping up as the people who had done all this stuff before and were super successful. And so I was like, I know, I'll go to them. So I went to two of them and said, I'm going to sell this coaching program uh, the, the morning of. Would you guys be interested in doing it? And they were like, yeah. And I said, I'll give you 20% of whatever I sell. And they were like, absolutely. And I was like, that means I get to give 80% for doing nothing. I like that. So I did the thing, made the presentation, had all those people in the room. And then I was like, the moment of truth is when you make that pitch. And I had never done one of those from stage pitches before. And I was like, so you know, if you're interested, fill out the application. And then it's like, I wonder what's going to happen. And the line snaked from here like a Disneyland line all around. And at the end of that four hour period, I had sold $465,000 worth of coaching to these people that I didn't have to deliver. So I got to keep 80% of that, absolutely. And then in follow-up trainings, sold another million dollars. So that was trying to figure out everything I could get out of it. The other challenge for me was that you have, I, I didn't have a list I mentioned at the beginning. So I asked the affiliate manager, I said, um, can I have all my opt-ins? for the opt-in page, because you're supposed to send them as an affiliate, you send everybody to an opt-in page. And um, I was like, I'm going to send all those people that opt-in page, and they're going to register, and then you guys aren't going to do anything with it. And they're like, no, we send them emails and stuff. I said, you're not going to market to them like I would market to them. <laughs> and um, the affiliate manager, John Kronstadt, who's now a good friend of mine and now is the president of uh, Kajabi and a Warroom member, said, uh, said man, I talked, to, I talked to Mike. He said, no, you can't have them. And I was like, OK, no problem. So I called. Uh, uh, around and found a programmer to build a page that cloned exactly the registration page that Mike had up. And I sent all my traffic to my page where they registered. And then it registered them automatically on his page. So it basically, every time they registered in my page, it registered them on his. And I built a list of 7,300 people that had opted in, who I then sold millions of dollars of stuff worth of stuff to over the next few years doing different product launches. And then also was able, because of the success that I got, I got a name because I was listed on the leaderboard as number one. And everybody was like, how the hell did you do that? 
Um, so I started uh, sharing that with some of the top people in the industry and ended up being able to get connected to Frank Kern and all these other great, you know, long-term people that I otherwise wouldn't have had success with. Ended up doing lots of deals with them and doing partnerships and everything. So that was like getting everything out of each aspect of that. Oh, uh -huh.